Welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vanilla FM. In today's episode, we're going to finish the second season uh, that we've been spending in the Skybet Championship. So in the last episode, we um, came in at about March. We played the Stoke match. Uh, three, um, we won 3-2, that one. Uh, and that carried on the rest of the season. And now we're going to play against Newcastle. Um, in the previous episode, we secured... Uh, the fact that we're never going to fall in, within the relegation zone. We've actually gone up a little bit in the league table uh, to 16th. And we can either go up to 13th or maybe drop down a place, depending on how this match against Newcastle goes. So nothing much has changed at all. The only thing I didn't show in the last episode is the financial situation, which is now looking at negative 3 million. So I'm hoping all the cash we get over the summer is going to be enough to cover that hole. Obviously, excuse me, obviously that's been majorly due to the fact that we upgraded the youth training uh, facilities and also the uh, training facilities. So both training facilities have been upgraded this year. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be in the red quite so much, look. So, so yeah, so that's, that's okay, that's been an improvement. Anyway, as far as income, the biggest income at the moment for us is gates uh, throughout the season. Because obviously season tickets just comes in over the summer. Uh, TV revenue ticks in a little bit by little bit over the year. So that's been keeping us afloat a little bit as well. Well, not enough to keep us afloat, so I'm trying to say. So yeah, so not, not generating enough income to um, keep us afloat during the season. But it's okay, we should be able to make some money uh, at the end of the season. As you can see there, last year we made all together 17 million. So we should be able to match that figure, if not even improve on that figure. So we should be getting round about, I would say, I my guess would be something like six or seven million over the summer. So that will cover our hole at the moment and also give us a bit of a buffer, about two or three million uh, in the positive. So that's okay. Now we're going to play the last match against Newcastle. It doesn't really matter what the outcome is. We're not going to achieve much. The biggest thing we can do is go up to 13th, but that doesn't really affect anything. So I'm just going to enjoy the match. And I'm not really worried about it at all. Now, I had a bit of a recce of the squad. That took a while to come in, didn't it? I took a little recce of the squad and just kind of looking at um, value, the, like the contract lengths and the value of players and stuff. Mark Dodds is worth 1.7 million at the moment and his contract doesn't run out for another three years. So we're going to be able to hold on to Dodds as like for a long time, which is good, unless he ever wants to try and leave, uh, if he gets unhappy for some reason. I can't see why he would get unhappy. Uh, he's our captain, he's also a club icon, so he's probably going to be quite happy to stay, although his personality is fairly ambitious. Um, players like that sometimes want to move on once they've had enough in the club, but hopefully that won't be the case. Um, another thing as well that happened in between the last episode and this episode, the youth intake has come in and is looking okay actually. Maybe not as good as in, like we had one year that was really good, maybe not as good as that, but um, yeah, it's okay. Um, so I promoted a few players to the end of 23s and uh, gave contract to some of those players that were presented in the youth candidates. Not all of them though. I think I terminated about six or seven of them. Um, but yeah, we got we got enough to take us over. Now the other thing I need to do over the summer, or maybe at the over the summer or at the start of the next season, is look at the end of twenty twenty threes, see which ones I want to sell. 
which ones I want to just terminate the contract, um, etc. Because I like keeping it to a limited number of just 22 players. Yeah, so I think I've spotted already a couple of players in the under 23s that there's usually a bit of interest for, for them going around, uh, like um, offers from clubs, and actually they're not as good as our other players. So I might be able to do a little bit of profit on, I think, only a couple of them though. But that will help the club. We've also had a couple of players that had been had been poached for my junior setup uh, they finally showed up in our clauses uh, one of them is still there the other one I've sold all the clauses so I made about 45k which doesn't really help our club at all but at least we banked it the other player is still there we the there hasn't been an option to sell the clauses off so that's why I haven't done it yet Um, do this and that, okay. Yeah, so, so, th um, since this is such a short match, uh, I'm going to see if we can have a look at the, uh, in between, like the season end, um, uh, prizes and all of that. Now, as far as the season goes, it obviously hasn't been a very exciting season in terms of achievements because our biggest achievement was just to avoid the relegation zone. That that was it. There was no... We were never going to survive yet at that level in the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup. Um, we were never going to achieve anything within the league itself. That was noteworthy. So, um, it's one of those meh sort of leagues because our club is not big enough to cope with doing anything big at this level yet although in the big scope of things we did a massive achievement because we have a tiny tiny budget compared to all the other clubs um and we're spending the least amount of money you know when it goes through the transfer window and at the end of the transfer window it tells you like a little like sideways bar chart about how much money each club is spending both on transfers and also on w the wage bill. Ours is always the very, very last one. Um, so yeah, so we, we're working, we're running the club on a tiny, tiny budget with players that are arguably not good enough for this league, yet it still works. So I think that's probably down to management. This is why I came in. So we're losing here, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's not going to affect at all anything else this season, so so that's okay. Dodds is not going to break the record of assists, but I'm sure he'll have other chances to do that. Now Dodds is finally starting to get old. He's 25 now. We got him when he was 17. Uh, and then we sold him and got him again when he was 19 or 20. Oh, oh, could be a gold chance. Oh, wasted. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Dodds has done really well for us. As now he's, I think that we got him for free. And then we sold them for 40, I want to say 43k, 45k, something like that. And then we got them again for free. And then, like now, he's worth 1.7 million. So I think Dodds has been a great investment for our club. Um, hopefully we'll be able to sell him again for some sort of profit when he starts to decline in comparison to the rest of the squad. Which won't be... You, it won't be next season, it'll probably be near the end of his contract, but which will make things tricky because the clubs will just wait for him to finish the contract and then maybe that's when we want to get rid of him, so we'll probably just release him in the end, but hopefully not. Okay, last chance of the game, I think. Dodds with the corner. 
and nobody was able to make anything of that so that's still a loss but that's okay now we won't have any league prizes i don't think we still managed to finish 16th i thought it would drop down but that's fine so 16th is roughly what, what my predi prediction was when i did the first episode for this season I don't think we'll have any league prizes, uh, like, sorry, league awards, just because we were a very mad team, like, you don't really start getting awards until you're, like, into the playoff zone, really. And we had a massively negative goal difference, I think it was, like, minus 23 goal difference? 24, there we go. So... Um, yeah, so nothing, I don't think we're going to have anything relevant. Okay, so a couple of people retiring, uh, Matias Oliveira is retiring, and he's been great for us, he's absolutely great for us, given his age, and he had some injuries as well during the, the season, especially at the start of the season, he was injured for quite a while. So given all of that, he was, he was great. He was also a vice captain, which means we're going to have to find a new vice captain. Now, I think he might be the only one to retire, except maybe Max Lowe. Max Lowe could be retiring as well. So look, uh, before we look at that, let's have a look at the squad. Um, let's go by age. Oh, Max Lowe hasn't decided. He might still decide to retire. Um, it's quite likely that he will. Okay, so let's. I always like to tell you like which ones are legacy. Will Huffer is legacy. Gary Camford legacy. And by legacy, I mean players that are no longer with us. Brad Hills still with us. Kaya, uh, he left last season. Richard South, still with us. I think he might have been inducted. Yeah. Uh, Alan Jardine, obviously with us. Simon, with us. Robinson is legacy. Brandon is legacy. Ryan Lloyd is legacy. And also, he was an original player from, um, uh, the, like, the Hereford in real life. That's the only player from Hereford in real life that made it th to this. And Mark Dodds. Although Mark Dodds never plays in the striker position, but that's where they decided to put him. Uh, the season review... Oh, I've never seen this button. Oh, there we go. Nothing much to see there. Nothing much to see there. So yeah, our revenue, we need bigger broadcast revenue. We haven't got any prize money yet, but we will. There's always about four million that's given out to teams for just for participating in the championship, so we should be getting that in the summer. But that's it's not prize money as per se; it's just participation money rather than prize money. Dodds is back back in the shirt sale. He missed out last season because he was injured for the majority of it. Tom Yates is a surprise because he didn't play very much this season, although he is a club legend. Not club legend, sorry, a uh, favored personnel. And yeah, okay. Yeah, pretty much agree with all of that. So, fan player of the season, Mark Dodds, no surprise. Young player of the season was the goalkeeper, Duncan, which also managed to steal the position from Tom Yates, which I was surprised about. He's also the signing of the season. Goal of the season was by Declan Wright, the Australian right winger. Top goal scorer, 11 goals for Mark Dodds and most assists for Mark Dodds. Most player of the matches, also Mark Dodds. Average rating goes for the goalkeeper and no surprises that uh, halfback Alan Jardine again with most passes completed per 90 minutes. We spent the most money ever on Morgan Clark and we had the fastest, goal, fastest goals goal within 24 sorry 14 seconds probably the the same goal that got him the goal of the season maybe okay right moving forward um 
we're gonna have a quarter of and that's less than last year I think let's have a look at um, yeah that's less than last year and less wage budget budget as well let's see if I can send back some uh, loanies no not yet okay uh, ba, ba, ba. that's all the same as usual I'll s um, oh yeah let's have a look at this so negotiate so they still want to expand the stadium sell players before buying no let's not do that I'm happy to do everything else to be honest but I don't want to sell players before buying no way nope I don't want to do that ah I have to confirm don't I Okay, so they're asking us to sell players before buying. It's only preferred, it's not compulsory. Um, okay. That's going to be annoying. Uh, still fighting bravely against relegation. But I think we can, can do better than that. The final dynamics for this season. Very good. A few players asking to leave, but hopefully that will all settle at some point. Who spent the most? Antonio Santos. Yeah, okay. Alright, let's do the team meeting then. So, discuss plans for next season. The board reckons we're going to fight bravely against relegation. The Players probably think the same. So let's have a look down here. Financial realities. No, let's not talk about money. Um, nope. I've been encouraged, by the way. You're taking all the time to implement our style. Nope. Not that. The season is over. And it's time for you all to have a well-deserved break. I want every single one of you to be fully rested in good condition when you get back. Because we're going to be hard again. Okay. Maybe not that bad. I'm pleased we're able. I'm pleased we're able to avoid the relegation this season, and we're going to learn the lessons from it to make sure we're not embroiled in a similar battle next season. Uh, we're going to. I don't know. Like all of these sound good. Um, hard press between these two, really. Um, I might go with this one. Oh no, they're upset. <laughs> I should have gone with the one below. They think we're expecting. I'm expecting too much from them. So I'm going to back down, and I'm going to say. I think taking your collective response into account, I might have been a bit too ambitious here. We could find ourselves blasting irrigation, but I know you all have good ability to keep us up. Uh, okay, maybe that's realistic. All I can really expect from you is that you work hard possible to avoid the drop. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I managed to make him happy in the end, which is nice. Uh, no promises so far. Thanks, everyone. See you after the summer. Yeah, I made them a little bit upset, but hopefully they'll back down after that. And I think I'm probably going to leave it there because there's no much point in me showing you the rest of the summer because it's now like going to be a lot of space borrowing and not much is going to happen. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold fire. Don't go anywhere yet. Hereford has successfully applied to raise the youth category rating from category 4 to category 3. The board has invested an annual cost, estimated an annual cost of running the youth setup of 1.2 million. We're already kind of spending that anyway. Wait, but this means we are finally going to have youth leagues. That's exciting. We're finally going to be able to have youth leagues. 
we're going to be, going to be able to play competitive with our youth and they're going to develop a lot better from that than playing friendlies. They have been playing a lot, but they have been playing friendlies. So it's not the same. So if I look at if I, I've always done this also all, all this time behind the scenes with the youth, I made sure that they were friendlies. Um, so I've set it up so they can have a friendly every week or whatever. So they have been playing friendlies. Also, the under 18s has been playing the under 18s um, cup, which they come in automatically now at the third round, but they got knocked out by Liverpool on the fourth round, which is understandable because that's where all the big teams play. Um, yeah, so that's going to be great. We're going to be playing new leagues, which means we're going to get better. Potentially, we might attract better players now that we're playing competitive matches. Um, yeah, oh, exciting, exciting. I'm quite excited with that. Okay, and I think we're going to leave it there. There might be some things going on in summer, things like people retiring and um, pff, all kinds of things. It always happens, but it's just like it seems to get forgotten in the soup of other things that happen at the very start of the season, all the exciting stuff. So, yeah, I will try to keep in mind to make notes of everything that is relevant and happens in the off-season. But I will see you again in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out the Patreon if you are in, if you want to get involved supporting the channel as well. Thanks so much. See you in the next one. Bye.